Hello, welcome to another Uniguitar video. As you may have seen on the title already, today we are going to use the famous tune Bella Ciao to employ some new techniques and tricks you might want to use on another pieces. Namely, how to learn polyphonic pieces of music, how to use chords to memorize and structure a piece, and how to play upbeat melodies. This arrangement is available on my recently published repertoire book for classical guitar, suitable for beginners. But I believe that intermediate students might learn something from this lesson as well and apply it to a more demanding program. So, without further ado, let's begin. When I start learning a new work, I like to feel challenged to do it, but I always start with the easiest part and then I build up from there. The more experience you get, the better you know which method works for you. In this case, we see two parts, the melody we all know and the bass line which is part of the arrangement. As you can see, the bass line has a slower rhythm and no beats or dotted notes, which is definitely the easiest part of this piece. Also, most of the notes are open strings and they will help you with playing the dotted notes of the melody. So the first step is to learn the bass line. Play it a few times until you can keep it regular and it also helps to count the beats out loud, like so. One, two, three. Whenever you're able to play it without interruptions, you can start singing along like this. Nah, I'm not gonna sing. That would be too terrible. In this specific case, you would only have to practice the bass line of the first two staves, as it repeats from bar number 8. These are also things that you can try to recognize immediately to save you extra effort while memorizing. Memorizing the piece is not mandatory, but it will give you some freedom from the paper to look at your fingers if you need to. Also, when you perform, your oral senses are reduced when you use your eyes intensively. Therefore, I prioritize the memorization, although I like to do it in a natural way. A very good way to memorize a piece is to define the information using the chunking method. But what is this chunking method? Basically, instead of trying to memorize a long sequence of notes, we redefine the way we see those notes by grouping them in chords. Check out this video of National Geographic. Whether it's your social security number, credit card, or even your phone number, chunking longer number sequences into bite-sized pieces makes them much easier to remember. Simply adding a couple of dashes into a 10-digit number causes your brain to treat it as fewer items, putting less strain on your short-term memory. On this video, you see a detailed explanation of this method. The link will be on the description below in case you want to watch it completely, but Come back afterwards, we're not finished yet. In this particular case, the melody starts with a variation of the A minor chord, which we play this way. And if you notice, the notes of the melody are almost equivalent to playing the chord note by note, namely in arpeggio form. The only difference is that we have to play a B, open string, within those notes. This would be the arpeggio of A minor chord, but we have to open string and then placing the finger again. And this repeats three times like this. Una Never mind. One. Again. Two. And the third time. And from here is something else. So, to memorize this, we can think about playing the A minor chord three times using this pattern that I just showed you. So you don't have to think about note by note. Here it goes, instead of thinking of a sequence of 14 notes, we need to memorize three times an A minor chord. And now our attention goes to the bass. The bass goes A, G, F, E, while we repeat the same pattern of A minor chord. G on the bass. After this, the melody is based on a variation of a chord, but this time D minor chord. It's actually the same idea as the beginning, but this time the pattern is a bit different and on the second and first string, like this. But we still use the same shape of D minor. We use this shape, we play it. Open string. So all the notes are around D minor chord. Later on you have a descending melody, just like you listened previously on the bass. F, E, D, C, B, 
So it goes like this. The structure of this piece is actually very visual. Check this out. This is another difficult subject, but I will try to simplify it. You see these rests and dots that interrupt the melody? Well, those are notes with irregular measurement, also known as upbeat notes. And starting a beat is never intuitive in the beginning. Simply explain, to start a melody of beat you need to pretend to have a note before the first note, your downbeat. You can also think out loud on number one. Think out loud, that's talking. Even though the melody starts a beat, on other situations of this piece you actually have a note, the note E, which is actually easier. You could also use this idea to start the pickup measure by playing the first notes twice as practice to feel the downbeat and then when you're ready you can remove it again. Let me show you. So I'm playing this note two times. The first one is not written on the score, but I use it as my one count. One. This would only be uh, necessary to do it on the first time you play this, this arpeggio because afterwards you have a bass. So you could do one and now you play the bass. And then this will help you to have the downbeat each time you need to play the arpeggio. You can also do both. You can count one while you play the note. One. Another way of doing this is to use the rhythm of the bass as our count, because this piece is written in 4 beats per measure, but the bass gives us another feeling, a feeling of a 2, instead of having 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, we have 1, 2, 1. Especially when we play faster we get this feeling of a 2 instead of 4. I would practice it this way. This not always becomes easier so you definitely have to try it out. And this is the end of this video. Hopefully you got some handy tips to start practicing polyphonic music more efficiently. And I would like to know on the comments below what method you use to memorize music and other things. Thank you for watching and being here with me. Stay healthy and I'll see you next time. Bye.